This video is a pre-postmortem on a CNC scroll saw that I've worked on over three design iterations. I need to disassemble this one to steal some of its parts. The main drive components of this system are the open build C-beam linear rails and I'm using the Duet Wi-Fi controller. In order to home the machine, we need to center the rotary table about the saw blade. We create an open circuit between the saw blade and the Lazy Susan. Then, using the Duet's M675 center probe command, we can move left and right until that circuit is complete and find the center. One nice sanity check that I added to this procedure was to wait for the circuit to be closed a first time. And this ensures that everything is set before it starts probing and risks overrunning itself if anything in the circuit is wrong. This is just a little test sequence to demonstrate its movement. You can see that the outer ring of the Lazy Susan is connected directly by the purple brackets to the vertical C-beam. And then the inner ring has a 126 tooth gear attached to it, which is driven by a 18 tooth gear, giving a 7x reduction. The 126 gear I had to print in six sections, and I chose 126 because we could get a nice integer ratio, as well as dividing it into an integer size so that I could print it in pieces. This meant that the divisions between the gears fell halfway between the valleys. Here's a close-up of how the outer ring of the Lazy Susan is attached to the main frame. It has five M3 screws that are screwed in radially. With the limited tools that I had, drilling those radial holes in the Lazy Susan was a bit of a challenge. But I 3D printed a matching bracket in order to both clamp the Lazy Susan itself and guide those holes. This shows how a workpiece would be mounted. A countersunk bolt leaves a flush surface on the bottom and a spring in between maintains some pressure to keep it against the work table. The blade guard in the center keeps downward pressure on the workpiece as the blade tries to lift it up and is so tall to clear the other components. I won't be actually cutting anything on this machine because I never quite got it to the point where it was reliable enough to showcase here, but to demonstrate the movement, I can attach a pen in place of the blade and create the world's most complicated drawing machine. The interesting thing about the movement system here is that the saw blade can only cut when you're moving in the positive y direction 
i.e. towards the back of the saw. This means that we have to constantly rotate the workpiece tangent to the curve that we want to cut and then move forward a little bit. This control system is nonlinear and I'll show a quick demo of what that means a little bit later. I went through a few different motors to control the rotary axis and settled on using this high torque NEMA 23 motor from Open Builds and driving it with 64 micro steps, which gives enough smooth motion at low speed because a lot of these movements are less than a degree and can happen very slowly, but we also need to be able to rotate this entire platter back and forth very quickly, especially as you get further away from the center of the workpiece. We have to rotate further and further and move further and further in order to cut the same length of cut through the wood. This was originally designed to cut jigsaw puzzles and the way that works is that the workpiece would start with a very small starter hole in the dead center. After homing the machine we could insert the workpiece and thread the saw blade through that center point. Then cutting one piece at a time we can cut the piece and then remove that piece from the wood entirely. This gives us a free space and means that we can move anywhere in that free space in order to start the next piece to cut out. Here you see that we just finished the first piece cutting and now if you imagine that's removed we now need to move the saw only in the place only inside the line that's already cut. The G-code generator I wrote finds a path through the empty space to get to its next starting location. And you'll notice that this piece seems to cut a lot faster, but the linear speed at the blade is still approximately the same, assuming I didn't make any major errors in the code. But since we're further away from the center, pivoting around our current cut location means a longer arc travel and more Z rotation. This demonstrates why that huge step motor comes in handy because in order to end up with any kind of reasonable cut time, we really need to be able to rotate this thing pretty quickly. This animation demonstrates the proper control for cutting a straight line, then rotating 90 degrees in preparation for another cut. The center point of the workpiece has to follow a circular arc and not a straight path as seen in the second animation. Generating the G-code for the control board, which has a Cartesian kinematic model, means we have to generate many waypoints to avoid the machine incorrectly interpolating. I spent a lot of time getting this right, and while it works okay now, if I did this again, I think I would look into implementing the kinematic model in the control board and keep the G-code generation plain. This is a G-code preview of the first shape drawn in this video and shows the many arc moves needed. I did experiment with using G-code arc commands, but had better results just using straight moves. These are some of the pieces that successfully got cut out, and they generally look okay, but after each of those was done, the blade would usually snap because the machine was not where I thought it was or there was too much error accumulated over the entire cut.
and these errors get even worse the further away you are from the center of the workpiece. This is one of the scroll saw blades that I'm working with next to an M3 screw for comparison. This particular blade is 23 thou wide and only 8 thou thick. Here's some old footage showing a previous iteration that only used a single y-axis and while it moved okay, had too much play from the long lever arm. I ultimately flipped the whole design to hang from the top to make it easier to access the workpiece. This shows the machine actually cutting after adding a second y-axis. Initially this was undriven, but I later added that. Here I'm also using a gear reduced NEMA 17 stepper which can deliver a lot of torque but has quite a bit of backlash and a low top speed. And the very first version that I did was a completely terrible idea but pretty fun to build. You can see that I intended to have a stationary rotary axis a linear axis that moved along its radius, and then a final rotary axis to counteract that first rotation to orient the workpiece correctly. That little stepper motor was never going to work, and I'm not sure what I was thinking. I also had to design this cable reel in order to manage the cables because the entire assembly needed to rotate. I think, as it is here, I had plus or minus two rotations from the center. I hope you found something interesting in this video, and it's on to the next one.